My name is Numduck. Uh, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm from La Manorla's uh, Kiwasanga. Uh, La Manorla Rinpoche uh, kindly invited me up to uh, polish, clean the surface of the, the Maitreya statue. I've been a student of his for about 11 or 12 years and uh, I used to be a metal sculptor so he thought that I might uh, might be able to do some polishing work which is as it is it's turning out uh, fairly easy so far. That's how I got uh, involved in doing this work. He invited me up here to, for a few months to polish the sculpture. And I'm using a product called Barkeeper's Helper. And now I'm polishing the, the hand, one of the hands of the Maitreya statue. You can see I polished uh, most of the palm, but the fingers still have this, uh, this dark brown uh, coloring on them and I'm gonna polish, polish these now. So I just put a little bit of this Barkeeper's help, Friend it's very good for copper bowls too. It does wonders for on copper. I wet the surface uh, that I'm going to uh, clean and just rub it on there. Sometimes it needs a couple of applications to really get it clean. But uh, norm these are pretty well darkened in stains. But normally with a copper bowl or something just one application would be all it would need and just scrub it in there very good. There's some discoloration that uh, some little spots of discoloration like right here that just won't come off but this this is going to be uh, gold leafed so I think the important thing is just to get it clean and those spots won't show anymore once once it gets gold. I scrub it like that then I just take a damp cloth and wipe off the material and dry it. You can see the difference between the two fingers and that's that's what I do. So my friend Daedra, you know Daedra polished these two pieces yesterday. This right here is what uh, what, it, what they look like uh, the, the condition of the surface of what it looked like before Daedra polished them. But I was a, actually a cook at uh, uh, Campo Kartar Rinpoche's first uh, three-year retreat. Uh, I went up there just to have lunch and to check out uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhism and uh, the retreat manager during lunch asked me if I wanted to cook at their three-year retreat. And I said, well, I'm kind of a busy guy. I got other stuff to do. But he talked me into it, and I thought it's a good merit, and it would be a great experience. Uh, the previous cook had quit, so I went into it about halfway into the retreat and cooked. And that, that was my first experience with Tibetan Dharma. This right here, this right here is, I believe, is the upper arm, one of the upper arms. This is the way all the other pieces uh, looked before I polished them. There are huge pieces in here that I, I have no idea what they are, but they'll get polished. Up there, you can see up there are some pieces. I hope there's enough light in here. You can see this is pretty shiny. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this one came out, with the way the head came out. This was uh, made in uh, one, two, three, four or five sections. And you can see the seams running down, running down the, the seams where the sections were joined, running down the, the face. seam down here at the neck. Here's the back of the head, Silvio. All of this, these little uh, 
hair curls, I guess they are, uh, were hammered out. This this is a colossal uh, a colossal piece of work. Uh, uh, I'm just focusing on the rubbing and and looking at the minor imperfections and trying to scrub them out and stuff like that. But it's, it's very it's very relaxing and calming. Yeah, well, this is this is a great work. I'm I'm glad I'm doing it. Yeah. Uh, I've I've heard uh, from different people different heights of the statue, and I believe it's between 25 and 35 feet high. So it's very very meritorious work, and I'm very fortunate that Rinpoche invited me up here to to work on the statue.